Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. I hope you will consider subscribing. So today we are going to be doing something fun with pineapple. When I was at my local Meyer this week, my favorite grocery store, they had these delicious pineapples on sale for 77 cents each with M perks. So I picked me up some pineapples. I thought I'm gonna can some pineapple-y things up this week. So today I'm gonna bring you along for making pineapple topping. So delicious to have on your shelf, great for a pineapple sundae over ice cream, great over a butter cake uh, for dessert. You could also add it to marinades or to barbecue sauce. So it's really nice to have on your shelf to jazz things up a little bit. So anyway, the recipe comes from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. If you don't have a copy of this, make sure to check the links in the description box. I will leave a link for it down below. So it's just, simple simple stuff here we need five cups of crushed fresh or canned pineapple you can even use pineapple you've already canned up i'm going to be using fresh in this case and we need four cups of granulated sugar couldn't get much simpler than that uh, to prepare my pineapple i just trimmed the ends and skinned it I chopped it into large chunks and then to get crushed pineapple, I took some help from my food processor and just processed it, pulsed it a couple of times until it was the texture of crushed pineapple. Make sure you don't take it too far. We don't want pineapple puree. We want, you want it to still be kind of chunky. So make sure it still has some texture to it. And as a matter of fact, that is one tip that is given in the ball book. Uh, it says to coarsely chop into large pieces, place in a food processor and pulse several times until pineapple is medium texture. So really easy to get your crushed pineapple. The five cups of crushed pineapple, I'm gonna kind of go over this because I get this question a lot about canning. Uh, the five cups of crushed pineapple is after crushing it. Many people ask, do I measure my amounts before prepping it or after prepping it? It can vary depending on the recipes so you have to kind of read carefully they're wanting five cups of crushed fresh or canned pineapple so that would be after you've crushed it so that's what i have here we are going to be putting it into a large pot we're going to boil it hard that is the instruction in the ball book stirring frequently for about 30 minutes now we want this to gel for us so it has some body to it so if you want detailed instructions on gelling, uh, you can check out my orange marmalade video. I go over all that. But what I'm gonna do to ensure that it gels to the right texture that we want, I'm gonna use my candy thermometer and I'm gonna bring it up to 220 degrees, which is the correct temperature for gelling. There are other ways to test for gelling. You can do the freezer test, you can do the sheeting test. I have found using a candy thermometer works the best. So I'm gonna be using my candy thermometer. We're gonna boil it hard, uh, like I said, for about 30 minutes, stirring frequently until it reaches the gel stage and then we're ready to can it. Super simple stuff here, it could not be any easier. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay guys, here we go. I have my heat on medium high. We're gonna add our five cups of crushed pineapple with the juice, make sure you include the juice. And then we're going to add four cups of granulated sugar. We're gonna give that a stir. And we're gonna follow their instructions, which say to just keep it on a medium high heat until all of your sugar dissolves. Once the sugar dissolves, we're gonna crank up the heat to high and boil it hard for about 30 minutes. Okay guys, my sugar is completely dissolved and I cranked up my heat to high now. It is, we are coming upon a hard boil and this is what we want to happen for about 30 minutes um, and then you can test for gelling however you prefer to do that like i said i'm going to cook mine up to 220 degrees make sure you stir it fairly frequently you don't want it to scorch or burn on the bottom and while that's happening i'm going to get my canner and my jars ready okay guys we're getting close i just wanted to point out that it you will have some foam and if you don't want that in your jars you're going to want to skim that off so even though i'm not quite ready for canning yet i'm going to go ahead and skim that off as I'm coming up to temperature. So just an FYI, uh, get rid of your foam if that bothers you. 
Okay guys, I cooked my pineapple topping to 220 degrees, which is the appropriate temperature if you're at or below a thousand feet. Um, you need to cook it to a different temperature if you're at a different altitude, but all of that is described in the book. And you can also do the other two gelling tests, like I said, sheeting off of a spoon or the freezer test using a frozen plate. Um, and again, in, I have details and all of that in my orange pineapple orange marmalade video, or like I said, it's all in the book. So I am ready for canning. I have three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my canner. I also have my rack in my canner. I have uh, washed my jars. We don't need to pre-sterilize jars and lids. Just make sure you wash them. Your jars should be hot. So I'm keeping mine hot in a sink full of hot water. My lids I just washed and rinsed and set aside. So we are ready to fill our jars. And we need to fill our jars to a quarter of an inch head space. And if you haven't yet, before you started the canning process, you wanna um, skim off the foam if there is any. Once you're at your quarter of an inch head space, you're gonna use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick to release air bubbles. So just poke around your jar. If your head space changes, you can adjust it by adding more of your pineapple topping. I'm gonna to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar and clean the rims of my jars. You wanna make sure that your rim is nice and clean. We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal. Then you're going to center your lid and apply your band to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got exactly five one cup jars. That is the uh, size of jar that they are recommending for this. They do not give times for processing in pints or any other size jar. If you wanted to do it in the little four ounce jars, you certainly could, but you'll still have to process for the one cup jars. So our processing time is going to be for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna be steam canning. If you are water bath canning this, you wanna make sure you have enough water in your canner to cover your jars by one inch. Um, and we can put our lid on. Then I'm gonna crank my heat up to high. If you're water bath canning, you wanna bring your heat up to a full rolling boil before you start your processing time. For me, I have a dial gauge on the top of my canner that tells me when to start processing. Okay guys, I am in my green zone, which means I can start timing. If you are water bath canning, make sure you are at a full rolling boil. Now we don't, in either case, steam canning or water bath canning, we don't want it to be boiling too vigorously throughout the entire process. So you wanna make sure to adjust your heat just to maintain the full rolling boil for water bath canning and just to maintain staying in your green zone on your dial gauge if you are steam canning. Process for 15 minutes and then I'll bring you back. Show it to you, all right, sealed. Once my processing time was up, I turned my heat off and let my jars, removed the lid, let the jar sit for about five minutes. So that's where we are now. I'm gonna show you how pretty it is. Doesn't it look beautiful? Looks like sunshine in a jar. Love that. Love pineapple. It's gonna be so delicious, like I said, for ice cream sundaes, over a delicious butter cake, add it to barbecue sauce or uh, sweet and sour sauce or you could also jazz up marinades with it. It would be delicious in a teriyaki marinade. So lots of delicious ways to use it and it's going to be great to have on your shelf. I did have a little bit left over in the bottom of my pan so I scraped it out and it was almost another little baby baby jar full. I stuck it in the fridge because I wanted or in the freezer while I was processing because I wanted to see the texture of it and look it's just perfection. That is so perfect. It's just the perfect texture. So 220 degrees is the perfect temperature for my altitude and I'm just under a thousand feet. I cannot wait to use that on an ice cream sundae. So I hope you'll give it a try. This was a fun recipe to do. Super easy. Great to take advantage of a great sale at your local grocery store. The other thing that I wanted to mention is Curiosity Killed the Cat. While I was processing, I was also thinking, wonder how brown sugar would work in this to get more of that caramely 
flavor. So I have another batch going because I bought plenty of pineapple. So I'm going to try that out. So if you want to stay tuned just a few minutes more, obviously it'll be more time than that that will pass uh, before I can get there. But if you stay tuned for a for the next clip, I'm going to compare white sugar versus brown sugar and see if we can attain that delicious caramely flavor as well. Okay guys, so curiosity killed the cat, right? So I did do a batch with brown sugar and I have to tell you, it is absolutely delicious. Um, I'll show you. The, the downside to using brown sugar is obviously it's not nearly as pretty. You can't really see, I mean, you can tell that there's fruit in there, but you can't really tell that it's necessarily pineapple, but the flavor is incredible, in my opinion. You can still taste the pineapple, but it has more of a caramely flavor to it, and this is still warm, so it's not set up the way that it will be. It'll be set just like the other one. So this is a very rich, deep, caramely flavor, the original version with white sugar is what you would expect. It's a clean, sweet pineapple flavor and obviously a very pretty color. The one made with brown sugar reminds me of pineapple upside down cake. You know what it's like after you bake it. It has that nice caramely flavor to it, but you still taste the pineapple. It tastes exactly like that in my opinion. So. It's up to you what flavor profile you're going for if you want to swap swap out brown sugar for white sugar. Now, I do want to say that brown sugar tends to be a little more on the sweet side to me than white sugar, so I decreased the amount by about a half of a cup, and I used three and a half cups of lightly packed brown sugar in place of the four cups of white sugar. So just a little experiment there. Now, the National Center for Home Food Preservation does say that using brown sugar is not necessarily recommended, not that it's unsafe. There's nothing unsafe about swapping out your sugar, but it can produce an undesirable result, like the color. Um, they also state that brown sugar can fit in the category of overpowering the flavor of the fruit, and I would think that that's true maybe if you were doing a jam or it may not complement the flavor of certain fruits very well, but I think it pairs beautifully with pineapple. So I highly encourage you to give it a try. I enjoyed it, I think it's delicious, and I think both have a place on my shelf. So that's just my take on it. You do what seems appropriate for you. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Uh, make sure you check out the link to that book if you don't have it in the description box below. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.